there's a lot of changes that came in 1.1, but these are the most important ones you need to see. One of the biggest changes that had an effect on a lot of characters in the game was the bugged electro charge reaction. And because this elemental reaction is caused together with hydro and electro characters, there are some serious team building restrictions where only one of the characters elemental mastery was taken into account and even worse, triggering the reaction itself didn't work as it should and had more bugs in it. So as you can imagine, if you were using someone like Lisa and Barbara in the same team, triggering the electro charge reaction was very messy and you had to abide the rules of the bug reaction. Luckily, it seems to be this serious bug has been finally addressed in the 1.1 update, so now you can finally use Hydro and Electro characters in the same team without being restricted by this game-breaking bug. And for those of you who are unaware, the reaction damage from Electro Charge is based on the elemental mastery and the level of character who causes the reaction. So for example, if Lisa uses her basic attack on this Ruin Guard and then you switch to Barbara, her basic attack will react with the Electro status left on Ruin Guard and Electro Charge reaction will occur, causing Electrocution two times in a row. Now the same could also be done in reverse, but as you can see, the the damage done from Lisa's Electro Charge is significantly smaller and that's because her level and elemental mastery is very low. All in all, this is probably one of the best changes in the update since a lot of the players were struggling to build their teams that included both a Hydro and Electro character, which means the viability and potential of these teams were very unreliable, but thanks to this update, Genshin Impact community can finally use their favorite team combinations without game-breaking restrictions. Even though fighting Jwalin is a weekly activity, a lot of the players were not looking forward to facing this giant dragon. And the main reason why the community was dreading this weekly fight was because of the many bugs this dragon was using against the player. The first one included was the breath attack, that had an absurdly large range and escaping from it was nearly impossible, but now it appears that this unfair attack has been finally fixed and you will have an easier time avoiding it. Now the other one was definitely the most rage inducing, where after you climb on top of Dwalin, if you quickly switch to another character, you will be teleported back to the ground. Now this was probably one of the most extremely annoying bugs you could have and meant you had to play around it so most of the players had to switch their main damage dealer before climbing on top of Dwalin so that they could unleash only one source of damage before the dragon knocks them off. This also meant that players were unable to fully utilize elemental reactions since this required switching to a different character and getting teleported back to the ground was one of the most evil ways to punish the player who wants to capitalize on game's mechanics. And after extensive testing, it appears to be that the bug was partially fixed or at least the teleportation occurs less than before, which means you're still risking if you want to switch between characters when on top of Dwalin, and even if the bug was addressed, it's still highly advised for you to tread carefully. So the main takeaway is that the fight is definitely more easier, yet still unstable, and hopefully by the next update we can fight Dwalin bug free. There's nothing worse than having to deal with bugs that reduce the potential of your favorite character. A lot of issues were addressed in 1.1 that included some major drawbacks for a few of the characters in the game. Probably one of the most annoying issues was when Razor wouldn't gain any energy or sigils after using his elemental skill on the enemy and quickly dashing afterwards. Luckily, this was finally fixed and now fighting inside high difficulty domains and abyss floors has definitely become more easier. And unsurprisingly, the unluckiest character in the game, Bennett, had a major problem with his elemental skill where during the explosion, enemies standing very close to him wouldn't get damaged. Hopefully, after getting this issue fixed, Bennett can finally enjoy some peace and quiet when blowing up. Finally, the bow users in the game received a pretty major boost in damage by fixing the issue with their auto-targeting, because sometimes when you would try to attack the enemy, the arrows would go off in the wrong direction, which meant losing out on damage, and this was very upsetting, especially in time trials like the Spiral Abyss. A lot of players were expecting the pre-registration rewards to go away once the update goes live, but it seems Mihoyo decided to leave the rewards open and even made things easier for new players coming into the game. This also means that rerolling is still possible for anyone who is interested, so if you're just starting out and you're not happy with the characters you received, you can still go back and start a new account, although some of the other rewards besides pre-registration might be excluded. Still, being greeted with a bundle of rewards is a good decision that developers have made and anyone who is new to the game can have an easier time, especially if they are free-to-play player. The last few changes have definitely made the game not only more enjoyable, but also more friendly to free-to-play players. Probably the most important revision was the decreased amount of resin that's required for the weekly battle pass mission. Instead of needing to spend 1,600 resin per week, the cost was reduced to 1,200, which comes out to roughly 171 resin per day. Now this still means the player needs to actively participate in the game in order to complete this mission, but at least you won't be forced to spend your fragile resins or primo gems in order to reach this goal. However, when it comes to 
expeditions, there was nothing more dreadful than being locked out from using the character when sending them out, since this was a major problem for many of the free-to-play players, because they will naturally have a smaller pool of characters to choose from, and the fact that you were locked out from using the characters meant less experimenting or even worse, puzzle solving. And thankfully, no one will ever need to experience the nightmare of encountering a fire puzzle that can only be solved by Amber, who is on a 20-hour expedition with only 30 minutes remaining. So in summary, the Electro Charge Elemental Reaction finally got fixed and players will now be able to play their favorite Hydro and Electro characters without restrictions. And the fight with Dwalling has become somewhat easier, although not every bug was fixed when climbing on top of his head. But at least characters like Razor, Bennett and anyone who uses a bow got nice boost to their damage output. Finally, new players will still be able to redeem pre-registration rewards and free-to-play players can now enjoy using all of their characters without any expedition limitations, while at the same time, completing the weekly resin battle pass missions have become easier. Enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell as well as gently press the like button. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter for daily Genshin content as well as check out our other videos recommended for you. Thank you for watching us.